You are watching Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Sonam Wangdi. Our top stories this week. The foreign minister was acquitted of all charges against him by the Haar District Court. Opposition parties say the Prime Minister's State of the Nation report is too repetitive. And more than 5,000 cartoons of Maggie noodles have been sent back to Nestle India. Haar District Court acquitted the Foreign Minister Rinzi Doji for alleged abuse of functions related to Lhaka Kaap reconstruction case. The Foreign Minister, as the then Ha Zongda, was alleged to have favoured one of the local sawmillers by awarding sawing works worth around 1.4 million gitam without the approval of the tender committee. But the court found that the decision was taken in consultation with the tender committee. The Foreign Minister was also charged for using the Zongkak's DCM truck to transport timber from Ha to Thimpu for his personal use. However, the court acquitted the second charge as well. The court verdict says, since according to a circular on the use of government vehicles, a civil servant is allowed to use government vehicle under pressing and emergency need. But the minister was asked to pay 4,166 ngitam as restitution for not being able to produce receipts. The minister was not able to produce receipts for two of the ten trips in which he used a government vehicle. In the same case, the former project manager was also acquitted of corruption charges against him. The project engineer of the Lhaga Kaap corruption case was sentenced to two years and six months in prison by the Haar District Court for passive bribery of public servant and forgery. Project engineer Tashi Gelsen was found guilty of colluding, soliciting and accepting a Samsung Galaxy phone worth 33,500 item as a bribe from a shopkeeper in Paro. Tashi Gelsen, who was suspended from service in February, can pay in lieu of imprisonment. Opposition member branded the Prime Minister's State of the Nation report as too repetitive as it included many aspects of the previous reports. Calling it much ado about nothing, Panwang MP Doji Wangde said the report included many projects the government had promised since 2013. At the mid the opposition, members of the opposition said the Prime Minister had reported almost the same things as he did in his previous State of the Nation reports, which meant projects are yet to materialize or start. This has made it even more difficult for the government to achieve self-reliance, while the concept remains central to government policies. Member of Parliament Doji Wangdi said the government has derailed from its course when it came to achieving self-reliance by 2020. He said at the most optimistic level, Bhutan would have only 3,000 megawatt of additional energy by 2020. The Prime Minister reported the four joint venture hydropower projects in 2013, but it is yet to take off. Similarly, the government is yet to provide housing for low-income group. We will construct 800 low-income rental units and about 100 units of houses for Opposition leader Dr. Pema Jamso said to achieve self-reliance, we need to have economically viable export-based projects and provide employment, but it has not happened. He said self-reliance began at homes, but the government was making the people too dependent by providing them free electricity, subsidies and free seeds. He said the idea should be to make them independent by slowly discouraging them to move away from subsidies and freebies. Opposition members also said the State of the Nation report did not have anything much on unemployment and economy, although they have been recognized as a priority area. Nirup Gelsen for BBS News. The opposition said the government has so far miserably failed to deliver one of the biggest election pledges to create adequate jobs and provide full employment. While they had promised to create 120,000 jobs by 2018, they said it is different in reality. The opposition said to create 120,000 jobs, the government has to create 24,000 jobs a year. Since 2013, only over 2,000 jobs has been created and at the current rate, the government would be creating 5,600 jobs by the end of five years. Full employment is 97.5%.
te tong ta gep chu jani di gade be zoni mo se wachin kong ki ngen zi chi te nula di na le tong ta zip chu jeni di ma chi da zoda chi kong da lok me chur ten lok me le gi la an su le chi ma cha zi chu gi le gi da te tara zoda chu wa an su na le bo kap zoni be de be ngel ngen zi di na di gulu tong ta sup chu tam ba di ma chi da ju be me se chu la yo di ge kap nang ki na lu ma to ba chi chi ge kap na le ba tang ni gi ngen zi le se shu ni Dani bo dalu halam tong ta di chu di niya sila. Tele tong ta chu tam han chu di ma chira ge hap na lu. Te zo da chung wa da tele ani tarap zo da chung wa chung ha chung wa chung na lu. Chung de lede lede chung wa chung na lu. Te yok chung ne kap be. Temporary arrangements be me. Yok chung ne kap so dalu ta. Attachment lo apparentis lo ani ki tole be shani be. Ingen si dani be me si shu ni na. The opposition said the government has no clue as to how to address the unemployment issue and is indifferent to the problem faced by the youth. The opposition asks what have the government done to address the unemployment issue through policy initiatives, strategies, plans and programs within last two years. And simply blaming the youth for not taking up jobs and talking about mismatch will not address the problem. Shari Guru, BBS News. The distributors of Maggi noodles have started recalling the noodles in the country. The Bhutan Agriculture and Food Regulatory Authority temporarily banned the sale and display of Maggi noodles in the market early this month. Following the reports of high lead and monosodium glutamate content in Maggi noodles, the Nestle India started recalling the stock from the market. More than 5,000 cartons of Maggi noodles were sent back to the company. And first of all, we collected all the magis with all the retailers. Uh, we did in two ways. One, we went to them, another few of them, they came to us. So as of now, we have finished collecting it. So same magi will be sending to our warehouse, which is in full selling. That magi will be dispatched from Thimpu to full selling. From there, Nestle company will give us reimbursement in, not in terms of cash, but in other goods. After that, we'll be re distributing them with other products. That means, instead of refund, other Nestle products will be replacing the noodles. In the meantime, Bafra is still waiting for the test results of the noodle samples from Thailand and India. Dikilhamo, BBS News. Bhutan joined more than 170 countries in celebrating the first ever International Day of Yoga. Hundreds of participants took part in an event held in the capital. People from all walks of life joined the celebration of a life-changing activity. Prime Minister Tsring Topke, who also participated in the mass yoga session, said yoga is more than an exercise. The body is straight, the figures. It's a meditation and a lifestyle. If practiced properly, it's considered a philosophy. There are lots of benefits right from side, yoga, but one might time, suffer from yeah. dislocation of joints if not practiced properly. We never advise anyone to do yoga without a proper instructor who knows about your body, who knows about your, the yoga very well. Because I told you, yoga is many of the exercises are going for a neuro neuromuscular coordination and all that if you do without uh, i mean proper guidance breathing is very important the awareness creation is very important so when you do without guidance we may get into some problems so it's always advisable to do yoga in the presence of an instructor they can learn from an instructor they can learn from an instructor and later on they can do at home they can follow the same at home uh, because the breathing pattern, where to breathe in, where to breathe out, all these things are very, very important. The physical, mental and spiritual practice of yoga has been growing popular in Bhutan as well. The benefits of yoga, it's not overnight. So it's something that gradually you start to, uh, you start, start to see the difference. So you do have to practice it in a continuous basis. So probably in about uh, seven months to a year, you, you, start, you start to see the benefits and you also feel differently as well. You, and I also feel a lot more happier as well, uh, a bit more calmer as well. So it's, been, it's, brought, it's brought a lot of uh, richness and calmness to my life. For the uh, last uh, four years, uh, 
since uh, 2011, I joined the Neurological Justice Centre. Since then, uh, I was very much regular. And uh, the reason I joined the uh, Neurological Justice Centre for doing yoga is that uh, I was suffering from vertical tinnitus in the 2011. And I visited uh, hospitals in Bhutan as well as in India. But uh, I think uh, there was no medication at all for this vertical tinnitus. But finally, one of the doctors in Jimmy Dojo Wangchuk National Regular Hospital recommended me to do a yoga practice in the Nirvana Culture Center. And that's how I came to land up in the, doing yoga exercises in the Nirvana Culture Center. And now I'm almost cured. The proposal of the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to observe 21st June each year as the International Yoga Day was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly last year. Sonam Chudan for BBS News. The university graduates who came for an interview at the Nenjur Institute of Technical Skills and Human Value in Gelifu are frustrated after the interview was cancelled without prior notice. The graduates had completed six-month training under the Graduate Skills Program at the Institute last year. The interview was supposed to be held on 16th and 17th of this month. A total of 58 graduates came for the interview in Gilefu, but they were shocked to learn that the interview was cancelled and they knew only upon reaching the institute. <laughs> the <laughs> Under the Graduate Skills Program initiated by the Labor Ministry, the training providers should provide jobs to trainees within one to two months after the training. Graduates had no option but to question the proprietor of the institute who said the dates were set following a verbal instruction from the Chief Human Resource Officer of the Works and Human Settlement Ministry. They said to me that they have already got a blanket approval from the RCC to take up from here. But when they are about to come, they have uh, gone to meet the uh, Minister, Minister of Works and Human Settlement. And then they had informed me that uh, Minister has objected not to, uh, to take up the uh, in-campus training but to go for the open uh, interview. Which means candidates from other institutes will also be eligible to sit for the interview. Kampal for Karma Wangdi, Tanden Finso for BBS News. Nearly a year has passed since Dagana got a new town, but about half of the shopkeepers have still not settled in. The new town has a handful number of shops, while many others wait anxiously for the plot allotment. Sonam Choki is one of the 21 shopkeepers from the old town who still haven't been alerted with a plot in the new township. And since the establishment of new town, Sonam and her family of five children have been living in one of these makeshift herds located below the new town area. The herds are not only shaky but also porous. Borrows not only from the heavy monsoon rain but also from animals like snakes and frogs. Sonam recollects earning between 1,000 to 1,500 nitum every day when she had her shop in the old town. And today 
she can barely make 200 ngitam, which she says is hardly enough to feed the children. She believes having a plot in the new town will make her life comfortable. So here I am, with a lot of children, a shop where I cannot sell anything. With my children going to school, it's very difficult to meet the expenses, especially without any land to work on. I would be really grateful if the government can give us a plot like the others. And doing this all by myself is very difficult. Sometimes I cry out my sorrows. Other households do share similar views. The place where I live is really bad. I can barely support my family as we cannot sell anything there. But I don't think it would be much of a problem for the officials for them to give us the land. For 33 households, they used only about 80 decimals of land, and for the 21 of us who still do not have plots, they won't even need an acre. The new town has over five acres of land, and so far only about an acre has been put to use. Tagana's Songkak engineer said that Songkak is doing what they can in consultation with the relevant agencies to ensure the plots are allotted. For this, we cannot, we cannot guarantee that they will get any. The same thing was we have already passed them, we have explained them in our Tomde meetings and in our Sogde, we have already explained them. That's long that's already explained. We, uh, as per the 2007 uh, Land Act, we cannot say that we will get it. So, but you know, we will help you to uh, push your application and your grievance. And I think we have already done in that way. We have put up, we have submitted, we have, uh, this case was uh, deliberated in the Thiri Zongho Sogdusla. And that these outcomes and the minister duties are we already forwarded to the council ministry. While many of those without plots are running around falling up on the status of the plots, some, like Sonam Choki, do not really know the next course of action, but is hopeful that she will be given a plot soon as she can to ensure she gives the best to her children as a single mother. Chetan Dupchu, BBS News. Dr. Purushottam Bandari, Purba Wangde and Sujit Kumar Rai were recognized as this year's ICT champions. Bhutan Telemedicine Group and Automatic Repository Information System for Community Health were their outstanding contribution to the society through innovation in ICT and telecommunications. Dr. Prashutam Bandari, a child specialist at the Galifo Hospital, initiated Bhutan Telemedicine Group, a close group on Facebook. The group, which started in 2010 with 10 members, now boasts of over 200 members consisting of doctors and health workers. The main purpose of starting this group was uh, to, you know, um, practice telemedicine and, uh, uh, you know, make access specialist healthcare in places where there are no specialists. So what we do is we basically, uh, basically health workers and doctors in the periphery, uh, they take a photograph or x-ray or lab reports or clinical details of a patient and post on the Facebook page, which is seen um, uh, by specialist doctors and other colleagues in other parts of the country. And uh, basically they advise the health workers in the periphery. So what happens is that uh, in the peripheries where there are no specialists, uh, uh, the patients had the advantage of getting specialist as advice over this uh, you know facebook page purbawandi and sujit kumar rai who works in a private firm voluntarily developed a automatic repository information system for community health at the moment it is being used by the national referral hospital uh, we build an uh, like archie system for community health system it, uh, it's an uh, automatic repository system for community health system. Basically, it does uh, give service for the woman who comes uh, in the stage of pregnancy till he, she gives uh, birth to a baby. And uh, that uh, process follows till that baby, baby gets vaccination till uh, uh, like, uh, the baby gets five years old. And that system stores all the record of that uh, from mother's pregnancy to that uh, birth uh, vaccination. The event was organized by the Department of IT and Telecom under the Ministry of Information and Communications. Compiled for String Demo, Dikilamo, PBS News. Cardamom is the main cash crop for farmers in Sarbang, but farmers say they are not able to fetch good price. Farmers have started mass agriculture production, but marketing their produce has always been a challenge. Farmers prepare their cardamom for sale. The cardamom business is in full swing. 
farmers have no other option but to depend on a few buyers from across the border. And chances of getting a good price are very low. They want the government to organize the trade similar to potatoes and oranges. Whatever the rate is, we have to sell it to the Indian buyers. And they deduct about 2 to 3 kilograms in the process. And a kilogram will fetch about 1,000 newton, which we don't get. We cannot trust them. We would be thankful if government could help us market the produce. We take our cardamom to Gelefu for sale and we don't get good price. The few Indian buyers say the market price is low and we are paid less. We would be grateful if government gives us place to do the business. The Food Corporation of Bhutan in Gelefu said they have never involved in cardamom business and has not received any reports or complaints from the farmers. But the corporation said if farmers want them to organize the business, they would be ready to help them. Compile for Purva in Gelifu, Sunam Lhamo for BBS News. Well, that is all we have for you this week. Join us again next time. Until then, this is Sunam Wangdi. Say goodbye.